News Talk ZB, Wellington on Saturday with Justin Dufresne, 12 minutes past 10. Now, I'm a sometimes crossword person, but I'm a code cracker addict. I mean, there's not a day passes that I don't look forward to the challenge in the Dom Post. And if I can grab a New Zealand Herald, I'll whack that one off too. And yes, I bought the books. Excellent companions I found on a trans-Tasman flight. Um, code cracker, I should explain, for the uninitiated, is a sort of a literary equivalent to Sudoku. It's a, it's a crossword kind of a grid. Each square is numbered. Each number represents a letter of the alphabet. You're given one, maybe two, uh, of the letters to start. Code Cracker is the property of Simon Chooker, about whom I knew absolutely nothing. And I thought it was time to change that, so we invited him in. Simon, good morning. Good morning, Justin. Where did the strange voyage begin? Well, it started um, ooh, probably early 90s, mid-90s, when... Uh, I'll go back even further. People often ask me how it's happened, and my my standard answer was sort of nepotism because <laughs> my uh, my father basically gave it to me as a sort of a as a holiday job at one stage. He mm. started doing crosswords in the mid '80s. So Alan Shuka, uh, in fact, still does the quiz word and the listener sort of thing. I still got his name on. Right. But he saw there was a void in New Zealand crosswords, basically in New Zealand papers, because of course most of them are. English ones, and you, there's only so many English rivers that you don't know before oh, you start getting... Dorset counties. Yes, and, uh, that's yeah. the one. So <laughs> he saw there was a, a gap in the market for that, so he started, um, and he, he was interested in doing a sort of different sort of venture, so he started doing a New Zealand series of crosswords and sold that to papers across the country and you know built up from there. So he's um, started the puzzle company, which is still going, and um, the as one of the jobs where he said, oh, we want a small sort of puzzle for the for the listener, so we're looking at the... Um, not sure if we started with the listener, but it was the Take 5 which is now in the listener. And that was a small puzzle which sort of nutted out over a couple of weeks at some stage and then have been doing So that was a, the, 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 the 5 one was, uh, was a one you evolved yourself? Yes, yes. And on a, on a quite a small grid? Yeah, it's 7 by 7 grid, but it's yep. basically exactly the same as the Code Cracker style sort of thing, because that's yep. where it sort of the one started. And I did that as a, as a weekly job. And then what happened after that was um, uh, Dad had an English agent who we got some stuff in from England. We sent some stuff to them and one... Friday, I suppose it was, we got a call from him saying uh, the Daily Mail uh, have a puzzle writer who is leaving. Apparently he's, he's absconded and he's going to work for the opposition as of as of now. And he's had his hand his notice and said, you can't use any of my puzzles. Um, do you have a puzzle that we can produce, provide them? You know, just, we might have a, an entry here because it's, they couldn't get hold of their normal agent, etc. So I said, oh, give it a go. So I, we want, they wanted a daily one and a bigger one. So mm. I did a basically a a bigger version of the Take 5 sort of thing and sent that off, sent a couple of copies off and then they had a look at that there I suppose it was our, our night there morning sort of thing and they looked at that and said oh this is about the difficulty we want not this one and then I had a few more and then by Monday they were, they were running in the paper and, and they had been ever since there and then we started in New Zealand probably about a year later So you were actually producing that product for overseas mm. consumption before it turned up here? Yes, yes the, uh, the And it's still sorry. carried overseas? It's still carried, it's still, it's in well, I think it's in New Delhi. We've got a few as under the under the code word name, I think it is, in the over, overseas sort of thing. It's in papers in India and uh, England and Scotland and Ireland. It's been it's been over a few places, but mainly in the UK. It's it's the Daily Mail, which, as I said, um, you're not not sure what you can say about the paper as much, but it's got a, definitely a great puzzle in it. <laughs> and that's that's all you do. I mean, that 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 presumably puts bread on the table and yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I would never advise someone to become a crossword writer if they wanted to earn lots well, of money. That was. I really should start with that. I mean, are you a crossword person? Did you do crosswords? Did, do crosswords interest um, you? Because I don't assume that because you do. I mean, I, I, I quite like crossword, but I'm not sort of fetish about it like yeah, I am with the code. Um, I do like. Them. I don't really have all that much time for them at the moment. Um, as in. Uh, I usually write co crackers all the time, sort of thing. So uh, it's, mm. you don't really want to take a busman's holiday and do other ones. The I think it's well, similar to the co cracker. I, I would do the paper of the back of the Dominion. I'd do or back of the Evening Post or wherever. It were. The uh, there's always the the crossword at the back, sort of thing. Often, especially for commuters or workers, it's you know it's a breakout at morning tea time. Yep. You can do that. It's a it's a thing. So we always had that and always been. I think the whole family's always been interested in, in words and and that sort of thing. So that's I mean. Uh, it is a family enterprise. It was very much started as one. I mean, still, what happens is I write the puzzles, and then Mum, um, Deborah Shooker, she she checks them. So, so I may have written whatever four and a half thousand puzzles, but she has solved four and a half thousand puzzles or whatever. And she you've has written nearly five thousand puzzles. Code crackers. Probably yes. I think by the stage we're up to now, yeah. Doesn't your head spin? It's it's an ongoing process. Luckily, it has. I, I've sort of 
thought about recently. I thought when, when you add all that together, as I said, it's been over the space of a decade and a half, but yeah. it, it definitely mounts up. So, as a code cracker unraveler, how do you decide whether today I'm going to give them just one letter, or I'll give them two, or today I'm going to use the same, almost the same mix of letters in two, maybe different, three different words spread out across the grid? Yeah, well, it always starts with the, with the start a letter. Cause, I mean, start a word because I how. Is, is, you know, I don't want to give away more than one or two letters to start off with. I want to feasibly give away as little as possible for as long as possible. You want to be I'm, as mean spirited as you yes, can. Yes, really. basically. I don't, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I would often, I would come into, um, when I was working at uh, Electronics Factory. I would come into the factory on a uh, on a Monday morning or in the morning, and I'd uh, be told I should have my ears burning because I was being cursed roundly at uh, <laughs> by everybody at seven o'clock in the morning that morning. But the um, the problem, the major difficulty with writing the co crackers as far as, um, I, mean, I try and keep the difficulty level consistent, which some people find them too easy, some people find them too difficult, but I try and keep them at a generally consistent difficulty well, as level. Well, again, as a, an unscrabbler, um, as a cracker of your codes, they vary quite a bit. I mean, some days oh. you just, it may be my state of mind, maybe, rather than yours, that some days you just fly through the damn thing, and other days you swear and curse, and you oh, do. It's, it's the same thing with writing them. I think writing them is very similar to actually solving them. I do go through similar the process. On the other hand, the words I choose, for instance, I try to have them be um, general words rather than resorting to, um, for instance, an American crosswords, for instance, because they have almost no black squares. They have lots of those, I don't know, Scrabble champion words yeah. with the three-letter ones. And, you know, I try and keep the ones in the code, code crackers um, normal everyday words because there aren't clues to them, so you can't look somewhere else. So I try and make them ones that you, words you'd recognise. So that keeps at a certain difficulty level also. But um, the one or two letter, basically the puzzle shouldn't be too easy to solve too quickly. I don't want you to have solved the start a letter, solved, solved start a word, and then said, oh, that's it, I've done the entire So does puzzle. your mother get it? Does she, the more she does, does she get quicker at them or not? Oh, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure we're both quite faster compared to, uh, <laughs> compared to someone who hasn't done any before. I mean, well, of course, there are some things. I mean, you know, most commonly the most common letter is going to be an E, yes. and, and, but that's not necessarily so, and I've, I've, you've used that as a very clever trap sometimes. Yes, um, I, I know people who do solve it that way. I know people who have, I know people who... To add to the difficulty level, don't put, don't look at the start letters at all, but just try and solve it as a. I've done that. A yep. straight code. Um, yep. How I generally write them is I'll start with the start word. Um, so where does that start a word come from? Um, I over a great period of time. Um, for instance, uh, for those who haven't done them, for instance, I would start with a starter. Oh, start letter would be an R, for instance, and there would be a word would be something something r r something r so you'd say oh that could be terror, terror. or horror terror, yeah. and then you'd see that two letters in it would be the same so you say well it must be horror then so you'd have yeah. your letter r then you have h and o added to it and the h and o would lead you to i don't know there might be something h o so it must be who's would lead you to double so do you always really got to give somebody a second chance that it's not just that first word that you can you'll provide them a clue oh, somewhere else uh, there has to be only i mean that started with the take five because it was a smaller puzzle and you mm. had to make sure definitely that there's only one possible yeah. Solution because yeah. sometimes you might end up with it and two letters might get swapped, which is of course what uh, I have to check for. My uncle, of course, Deborah checks for as well. But mm -hmm. the um, yeah, so then I sort of work work the trail from there and, and see how it goes. But so there's no such thing as an average time it takes you to put together, or is it? No, it's probably similar to solving it. Um, I I take around, oh, probably say, I, I try and think about an hour per puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, you get clever people who say how quickly they can do them, I and mean, oh. you're coming back again to the most common letter Z, and the next one's probably A, and end of the word is might be an S, or if a word starts and finishes with the same, it's probably uh, an S or a D. Yeah. That's going to start and finish a word, bits like that. Oh, yeah. so people can do people can do it very fast. If people sort of put them aside and then come back to them later that night when they get the word that was that was niggling them. I mean, it's, oh, uh, I never come back to it. You, <laughs> once you've started, you're committed. You've got to stay with it until it's, it's until it's done. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, the books you've done. How many books now? Uh, eight books. Eight and they're books. all new ones, are they, or they're yeah, just they, reprints of the ones that have been in the papers? Well, actually, they haven't appeared. I'm pretty sure that ma they haven't appeared in New Zealand papers at all. I think the majority of those. Um, I try and make sure that they don't appear in New Zealand papers. Some of them have appeared in the in the Daily Mail, yeah. and some have appeared in overseas papers. But although I might have to revisit that strategy soon, but um, I, they don't appear in the New Zealand papers. No, so they're usually all new puzzles. But um, the uh, I, I find that if I've done a a few it's hard to hard to keep track of which ones are new and which ones aren't as far as resolving them sort of goes. But the the puzzles in the books aren't aren't New Zealand 
paper puzzles. Do you get much feedback? I do get surprisingly. What sort of things much. do people want to say to you? Um, Stop it. <laughs> no, they say that they've done it, or they'll complain about a word, but not so bad. Okay. I mean, the, um, well, they can't complain about the words too much because, as you say, you use simple, common words. I have had, for instance, a, uh, a friend's mother said, uh, complained about jog trot. She, she heard me quite a lot. Oh, really? I, I thought it was a, a well known word, but apparently. You've got to stuck a J in there somewhere, don't you? Yes, yeah, so yeah. definitely. They're difficult to get around to. But I have actually not used the word jog trot again just, just due to that. But um, yeah. so I, think, I think there have been maybe a couple of occasions where I've come across a word, I think. Uh, I don't know about that word. <laughs> oh, well, I, I do try and... I mean, I run past Ruth, my wife, as well. I sort of just... Um, I say, because well, because I've had a, you know, a linguistics background and various, you know, an academic background in, in some parts as well, you, you sort of... And wide reading, there are words which I think this is a, you know, this is... Might be slightly, this is a completely fine word sort of thing, but I usually try and get a, um, a second check on that and say, hey, am I being a bit... I'm being a bit strange here, and so yeah. You know, out of these two words, which is better than this or this, and she'll give me an opinion. Yeah. There's a lot of views and opinions and s concerns really about the use of the language in New Zealand English mm -hmm. language. That you know, texting, shorthanding, and all that sort of stuff. That that the language is under some kind of threat. Do you agree with that? I mean, you're uh, of an age group. I haven't described. You know, but people mm -hmm. don't know whether you're tall or slim or dark or young. Oh, or old. then you're obviously young. Say, and, say all the good things. Yeah. The, um, they can't see me. I can't. No, keep the keep the mystery going. Keep yes. the mystery going. The um, well, there's always a people complaining about the change of language. Of course, there's always a um, uh, there's you know, the language always changes, and as long as people can understand uh, what's trying to be said, of course, from a linguistics point of view, that's that's all that counts. Of course, people are used to things and want a style thing. But one good point is that people, with the advent of the texting and the Facebook and everything, strange enough, people are writing more. Than I they guess. have ever in the last, I mean, mm. you know, um, say 15 years ago, people, a large segment of the population would leave school and then that was it. They would never write anything again. They'd write a check or they'd write a note. And see, Simon, I have this concern that people stop speaking. Oh, well, see, that's another option. You know, and I've heard that concern too, that, you know, people's command of the, of the oral language is going to decline mm. because they're spending so much time silently yes, on keyboards or, or oh, phones. Yes, hand, handwriting's basically disappeared overnight. Yeah. So, but, uh, but there's actually more written word. More people are actually writing. You may decry the quality of the writing or the style, but yeah. the quantity of written word has hugely increased since all these various other avenues for it have arrived. We've just had an email from Chris who says, My father, Ronnie, lives in Rotorua. He's 87 years old, in excellent health, short of having macular degeneration in both his eyes. I buy the code cracker books and laboriously photocopy them onto A3 paper so they're large enough for him to see with his CCTV from the Blind Foundation and he just lives for them. So please can you say a huge thank you to Simon for me. That's very so nice. There you go. Yes. No, I mean, the fans, they're a huge fan. That's the reason why the, the puzzle's here. I mean, basically, the we started in the Dominion Post well, I'm not sure what I think it was the Dominion at the time, obviously, hmm. as a as a summer thing. Basically, over summer we had it over there for, they needed an extra thing over the Christmas period, and it was on for, I don't know, eight or nine weeks, and then it left, and there was such a, a uh, an outcry of people sending letters to the paper and asking for it to be continued, that that's why it basically came back. And also when the papers were merged, when the Evening Post and Dominion Post were merged, they had a poll on what should be kept amongst the two papers, because, of course, they had... Same paper, but twice the content. And I think the uh, response, the uh, the code record, I think was like second or something. For the people, people actually did want it. And I do have people who, you know, a lot of people really, a lot of people say, oh, crosswords, I don't follow crosswords at all. But people who do follow it, you know, really love it. I think there are some, quite a few people. Do you do there. Sudoku? I have done Sudoku. Does it interest you? Does it? Oh, not really. I'm just looking for reassurance, you see, because it doesn't excite me at all. <laughs> I mean, it's maybe numbers versus letters, words versus sums. Oh, I don't it, know, it, is a, it is a puzzle. I mean, I've, as I said, I mean, I've, um, well, I've been for the last, I mean, I've had various other jobs, and of course, with the writing the puzzles, the, what, if I have a 40 hour a week job, add to that to the, I've always got, it becomes a, whatever, 50 hour a week job, and 50 mm. becomes 60. So it's been a bit of a, bit of a strange thing having, um, not having a second job in writing puzzles. But what I've done is, um, with, uh, the birth of my son, we I've been actually working from home completely, so it's been a, it's a bit of a change. Although doing so you're a house dad, I'm a house dad. Yes, mm. so working around um, 
that also uh, it's not like I'm, I'm now on, on short times but it's a uh, it's the puzzles still have to get done every week I mean that's the thing about them there's, there's never any end to them there's no there's a, not and what do you, I mean do you see an end to them I mean as it is today do you see yourself going on with the coat crack as far ahead as you can see oh I'm not sure I mean I've always has it made you obscenely wealthy <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid not the um and and of course there's there's no job security at all that's what I mean I'm self-employed of course and you know mm-hmm. doing this and it's always considered it to be able to be removed at any time I mean because uh, the it takes one editor decision to say we don't want this I mean for instance yeah. and well more. most newspapers in New Zealand are in the control of one or two companies so if they suddenly yes. decide we don't want code cracker anymore it's not like you've got a whole lot of other papers you can go to mm. so I mean there are other ones mm. we can do but I mean it's but the thing is editors I've found don't really mind what the quality of the puzzle is what they really don't like and this is what um, Alan found as well what he really sold them on as opposed to different puzzles is they don't like mistakes. They don't like people because no. yeah, the they puzzle don't like can giving run, people yeah. an opportunity to pick holes in. Or I mean, I think um, there was once I think it was a Daily Mail. One of them it was, a, it was a puzzle. I think it was my own one of the errors got through, and it was toboggan um, with the number. It was it was not um, the B's and the G's got mixed up. B's and G's got mixed up, and it wasn't on down <laughs> lines, and it just got ha- suddenly happened, and they were getting a call every. Simon, two look, minutes. be reassured. It's like people who ring us when we um, give the wrong time. It's the oh, same, same kind of syndrome. It hasn't happened again, though. And, uh, that's, and that's out of whatever, 6,000 puzzles, and that's what they want. I mean, if you get, puzzle, get mistakes, then the editors and people probably get annoyed. Everyone get, calls them up, and they'll say, right, you know, we're not too keen on this puzzle. We're next time it comes up. But the fact is we don't make mistakes. And then that's the... Although, you know, I was still concerned for the first... I'm quite... I'm okay with it now, because, you know, it's been thoroughly... They've all been thoroughly tested by myself. But people say, oh there's a mistake in today's thing, you can't actually do this. And I'll go, oh, no, what's happened now? And I'll go and I'll check it. And, oh, no, that's fine. You've got the, you've misread the number or you've got the, put something wrong. So. And what, what's your view about, um, just finally, what's your view about the, because uh, you have competitors in the market who do similar kinds of puzzles, mm. the ones who shortchange and don't use, they cop out and they don't use all the letters of the alphabet, which you religiously do. There's always oh. going to be the 26 letters there. Yes, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure that's actually super required, although they've all, they've all sort of standardised on... Basically, my grid lax. I said well, mine was for years in New Zealand, and then there were some other ones came along that said, "Well, they've called them." I'm not sure they've always called them exactly the same name because I think they've sort of code tried worder and there's decoder. Yes, and so, yeah, oh, they've no. even been code crack errors with an yeah. S or something. And we did go along to um, some people a bit later because what happened was when my first book came out, I sort of eventually went to do it in New Zealand because um, someone had approached Ruth at work and said, "Oh, I don't do those. Oh, does your Husband is I don't do those puzzles in the paper anymore because they, you know, I, I bought his book and it was useless and I, you know, and he's gone off and, I, and Ruth said, oh, he hasn't, he hasn't printed a book. I'm not sure what you're talking about. And they bought the ones, of course, in the in the supermarket, which yeah. have seed co crackers. They, they assumed it was the same one, but of course the the style is different. They usually, um, I mean, they can be computer generated, which is well, obviously a lot quicker. I mean, you can press a button and cheaper and and, and cheaper. You can mm-hmm. print off, you know, make a thousand of them. But the um, the but you, when you do that, you have to make it. As I was saying earlier, to make it more difficult in other ways, you have to randomise the numbers, or and even then they blow out. But on the other hand, it's um, easier easier to produce. But you know, see how it goes. Interesting to meet you, and I can tell the audience you don't have two heads. Uh, you're not, you know, no, no, haven't got an extra eye on the middle of your forehead. Perfectly normal, rational young man. <laughs> as far um, as you can tell. Uh, <laughs> and you'll continue to frustrate a section of us, uh, no doubt, with the um, with the code cracker, Simon. Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Thanks for your time, yes, Simon Sugar. It's um ten thirty.